will be the big one to bring down the world economy for about five years at least. And you watch mainstream media, they just say it's incredibly wonderful, everything's going great. Uh, you're a conspiracy theorist. If you think their stock market that's doubled the last two years is overvalued, or if you think their economy's rigged, you're, 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 you're crazy. If you think the sky's blue, you're insane. If you think, you know, you have turkey on Thanksgiving, it's a conspiracy theory. I, I mean, this is a war against reality happening. He, of course, has an MBA from Harvard Business School and Bain Company, a strategy consultant for more than 100 companies. He's also been the CEO of several entrepreneurial growth companies and very, very successful in that right. I'm not going to go over all of his bio. Folks know who he is here. But we're hitting the demographic cliff. And historically, with that, they'll try to start wars, a lot of other insanity. And you notice he used to be on about twice a year. Then he's on three or four times a year. Last year, now he's on every month. We appreciate him coming on. He even came on a few days after his dad died uh, a few months ago, and we appreciate that. And now I'm really listening carefully because I want to hear how he thinks we might go over the cliff as we get closer to it. Are we going to see the big correction? Uh... 2008 big, bigger, what will it cause? They only increase the derivatives. They only increase what got us in this situation. Will there be new banker bailouts, new tax increases to give it to offshore corporations that cheat on their taxes? Mr. Dent is here to join us. He's got charts on uh, civil unrest increasing, everything. We're going to go over these in the next hour. In the last 15 minutes or so, we'll take a few questions at 800-259-9231 for Mr. Dent. Okay, Mr. Crystal Ball, here we are. Uh, now we've gotten closer to it. I'm sure you've got more of an electron microscope view of this. What in Hades is going on? Well, you know, Alex, I, the biggest thing since we last talked, China's bubble in stocks finally burst. It, it, it means nothing when a stock bubble bursts 10% or 20%. That can just be an ordinary correction. 35% in a little over three weeks. And how much would it have been if the government had not come in with a half a trillion dollar fund to buy their own stocks? And this came after the government in China had been buying empty real estate to prop up that market that's been falling. And after they created the greatest bubble in history by moving a half a billion people, um, low-skilled people, from rural areas to urban areas in the shortest period of time in history, China is the greatest bubble in history. It is finally coming unraveled. That's why I am confident that we are within, I'd say, weeks of, of the global bubble bursting again. China was the first thing actually before that in March. Germany the leading market in Europe looked like it peaked to me. And then and then the China crash in late May um, uh, and, and end of July. And now I think the U.S. markets are going to start heading down by early September, probably peaking in the next week or two. So I think this is happening. And the other big factor is that, and I don't get why the oil markets don't totally get this, in the stock markets, oil keeps dropping. You and, predicted three years ago that when we hit the cliff, oil would go to 40. Now it looks like it's worse than you say. Bloomberg's talking about $30 crude. Yeah, I'm actually talking, I've been talking for years about 10 to 20 down the road. I think we're going to see $32 in the next few months. And, and what that says is, and, and, and again, the markets still don't fully get this because everybody's thinking oil's going to come back to 70, 80. The fracking industry. A trillion dollar industry that's created hundreds of thousands of jobs directly and indirectly, $600 billion in junk bonds and highly leveraged debt. This industry is going to be dead. It's a bubble industry. It's a high cost. The debts, industry. because I know because a lot of folks in Texas are involved, the debts are all coming due. By next year, it's all bankrupt. Could that be the detonator in the U.S. sector? Yes, exactly. I think China is the detonator for the global markets in the world because it's the biggest bubble. And it's kind of like Japan in the early 90s cracking. But for the United States, I think the first debt bubble to crack will be these frackers. And when they start defaulting, junk bond rates will go up for other high-risk borrowers. And then you get a whole thing like the subprime crisis in 2008. There was only four states that, that had a big subprime problem in, in underwater households, and it triggered a global downturn. That's what wow. happens. You're too much in debt. All it takes is a trigger. It's not that the subprime crisis was the biggest trend. 
It's that the whole world was too much in debt. Demographics were starting to decline, as we predicted for years. And, and this whole thing has only been kept together since 2008, when it started to crash last time, by endless money printing. The sure, sure. I mean, you've documented the problem. You've been 100 percent that on. It's frightening. What happens next now that you're closer? You said till we got real close, you couldn't you know, break down with the trends exactly how it might unravel. Are you close enough now to, to tell us, you say within weeks, uh, I mean, how bad, how does it cascade? Is it a big bust or is it an unraveling? What, what do you see happening? Well, you know, first of all, our overall picture has been that, you know, we've seen higher highs in every boom and bubble uh, in, uh, again in 2000 and then again in 2007 and then 2015 now. Every crash has taken us to lower lows. We're seeing that we're going to go from a Dow recently of 18,300. We might get a little higher than that, I doubt it, but down to 5,500 to 6,000. That's, that's a bigger crash than we had last time, the largest crash since the Great Depression in 29 to 32. So, but that's going to take a couple of years. What I've been warning investors, um, especially in the last several months, when, when you have a bubble like this, you can't wait to prove that it's over and then get out because the first downturn is typically 30 to 40 percent. That just happened in China, 35 percent down in, in, in a little over three weeks. In the 2000 tech crash, the first downturn in two and a half months, 40 percent. In the 1929 bubble burst in the United States, 40 percent down in the first downturn. So you have to get out ahead of this. I think we just bounced off of this Chinese devaluation move, another desperate move to save a failing economy. And I think we'll bounce for a week or two, and then the Chinese market will turn back down and start collapsing. Oil prices will bounce from 42 here, which is something I predicted just weeks ago. That so we are down. in the dead cat bounce right now. Yeah. Yeah, they'll, they'll, we'll get a little dead cat bounce in stocks. Uh, actually, stocks may hit a new high slightly. Oil will bounce from 42 to, I don't know, 48 or 50. And then next thing you know, it'll be at 32 bucks. When it hits $32 for the second time since 2008 in that massive crash, stock market's going to finally realize in the junk bond market that finances these risky companies that the frackers are dead. They're over. They run out their wells at low cost once they, they develop them, and they don't ever build any new wells again, and a trillion-dollar industry dies and starts to default. So that, again, is the biggest trigger in the United States, I see. Wow. And then we've got all these other economic things happening. Uh, you talked about Europe. You talked about the EU. You talked about Greece defaulting. Uh, looking at Europe, how does that play into all this? Uh, then we've got Obamacare hitting. That's like a wet blanket on the economy. Uh, we've got Obama taxes just wrecking everything. I mean, it looks like Washington is trying to put the country into a cardiac arrest. Well, you know, again, what governments are really doing, they created this bubble in the first place. They overstimulated. They pushed interest rates artificially low. And then when the whole thing started unraveling in 2008, they started printing money out of nowhere you know, like $10, $10 trillion around the world, $4 trillion just in the United States, just to keep the economy from collapsing and the banking system from collapsing. But they created the bubble in the first place. So they're just covering up what they're doing. And, and, and you can see China's situation keeps getting worse. You know, they do X, then they do Y, then they do Z, but then they have to do another thing. It's because they're failing. You cannot keep a bubble going forever. Sure. Uh, and, and, and China is, is the largest in history, but Europe has its bubble, and they keep trying to stimulate. The U.S. has our bubble. We keep trying to stimulate. This thing's going to come uh, apart. I think, Alex, when I look at history, when you do have major crashes, it is September and early to mid-October when the first crashes usually hit the hardest and strongest. So I'm telling people uh, this market may have a week or two left. I would not be wow. in stock after August 25th. Okay. Uh, when we come back, I want to get your view on, and I know you, you've predicted it with incredible accuracy. You don't like to get down into little micro stuff because it's impossible, but in your gut, what you expect this fall to be like, what you expect Christmas to be like, uh, you know, elites separately, I know, are moving to like countryside redoubts. Uh, they're acting scared. 
and I've seen this building for years, they all know, like you said, they've been covering it up. I mean, they know what's going on. They just won't tell people. Uh, and then what's going to happen when the bottom falls out geopolitically, but also domestically with the unrest? I know you've got charts on that at harrydent.com. Folks, this is invaluable information. We wish it wasn't true, uh, but isn't it good to know a hurricane's coming and to have radar? In the old days, they didn't know. So it's positive that we're telling you a Category 5 hurricane is coming in. This is a short segment. There will be a long segment, obviously, 18-minute segment coming up next. We'll take some calls then. If you're watching uh, us via TV, it's a free feed. If you're a radio listener, it adds depth and documentation to things. I'm not just saying, you know, there's photos, the Queen of England hiring Hitler. We can actually show it to you, or we can actually show you the chart on the yawn or show you the chart on their stock market. We can show you Mr. Dent's chart. The $100 trillion in financial assets could disappear. We're going to put that on screen, Infowars.com forward slash show. If you want to see the free feed and share it with friends and family, another chart, S&P 500, uh, and some of those other numbers. And, and then the next segment that's longer, we'll get into – what he thinks is going to happen next, how this, he says within two weeks it could start. What does the start of that look like? Uh, but but getting into your $100 trillion in financial assets could disappear. Let's talk about that chart. Yeah, you know, people don't, I always talk about deflation coming out of endless money printing, and people go, what? They're printing money. That should cause inflation. They're only printing money rapidly, desperately, to fight deflation. Deflation happens in history every single time that you have a credit bubble that creates way too much debt. Uh, debt grew 2.6 times the US economy from 1983 to 2008, and then started to collapse. That debt causes financial asset bubbles in stocks and real estate and commodities and all these sort of things. And when those debt bubbles deleverage, when those financial assets, and, and again, what this chart shows is that it globally, the best estimate today, $231 trillion in financial assets. These are stocks, bonds, and loans. It doesn't even count real estate, which is huge. And I'm saying that in the Great Depression, in times like this of deleveraging, those financial assets, loans fail, bonds go down in value, but especially, and especially stocks, that money gets wiped out, it disappears. And it took uh, 24 years for stocks to get back to their highs in 1929, in real estate, 10 years to get back to their highs. So this money disappears, and when there's less money in the economy, you get deflation. There's less money changing the same, chasing the same assets. It, it's a reset, and it's an important reset. It's good. It's good that if homes cost less. It's good that if mortgage rates are less. It's good that if public education and, and college education costs less because we get a reset and all these crazy... Sure, but they don't let us have real resets. They're going to come in with bailout exactly. packages that only help the insiders. So so that's a good question. Wh what do you expect yeah. them to respond to this with, looking at what China's done, adding a chainsaw to their juggling act now? Well, yeah, China's done it. China keeps responding with more stimulus measures, more fight the bubble bursting. The U.S. has been doing this in Europe since 2008. Everything governments have done around the world have been to fight this bubble from bursting. Nobody's written down hardly any loans. What you have to do when a bank or banks or financial institutions lend too much money to bad creditors, that they should have to write those loans down and take losses, and their shareholders should have to take those losses. Nobody's allowing that to happen. Instead, the everyday person is paying for this with declining wages, and the rich are making more money than ever because sure. money is free. They've had to make money free to stop this crisis. Zero short-term interest rates, zero... And they get first debt. access to it and then loan it out. Yeah. And, and, and well, well, actually, what happens is these financial institutions, the way they're surviving, they're not lending money to small businesses and everyday people. They are speculating in markets that are rigged to go up by the government. Sure. Look at the stock market. Uh, the, our second chart shows that the S&P 500 since 2011 has gone straight up with only a 10% range of volatility because the government just says, we're going to keep pumping money in the markets. We're sure. going to keep interest rates at zero. And now banks That's charge the, you to keep money with them because they got so much free money. It, it's, it's crazy. But the free money causes these financial assets like stocks to go up. Most, a uh, half of the gains have been because companies are buying back their own stocks with free money. 
They're buying back their own stocks and great, making their earnings go up per share, even though they're not growing. It's crazy. Well, let's talk about then what that will do when they rush in and try to prop up the market like the Chinese did, what you expect, how long they can prop it up, or will it fail like China just failed? I mean, China has failed, and now they're dropping their, their currency, which hurts the rest of the global economy. I mean, it is amazing. Stay with us, Mr. Dents, our guest. Luke, Chris, Adam, Austin, Dion, and others. Your calls are coming up here in a few minutes for Mr. Dent. You can go to his website, harrydent.com, and find free chapters of his book, find specials on the Demographic Cliff, read articles, and a lot more. Be sure and take advantage of that. Quite frankly, you're crazy if you don't. harrydent.com. We're going to go back to him in just a moment. I want to talk about my philosophy here just briefly. Never, most longtime listeners know it, but new ones may not. We're sponsor-supported, maybe 30%. I used to be 100% sponsor-supported, but I got to mess with it. I got to vet it. Sponsors can come and go. I began making documentary films 20-something years ago because I wanted to tell the truth about what was happening in the world. That helped finance the launch of the syndication of my radio show and the news sites and the rest of it. And I learned to just, hey, if I'm using something, if I like something, become a distributor of it. The highest quality water filtration systems that cut out glyphosates, fluoride, hundreds of other chemicals, I don't want to get bladder cancer. And I can reduce that by not getting all the additives that are in the water and the runoff. So we sell the ProPure G2.0 entire family of filters at the lowest price out there. We're the biggest seller of them in the world because I have special contracts to be able to sell it at the lowest price anywhere. And then I go further, 10% off promo code WATER. <clears throat> so I'm an old-fashioned capitalist, and I sell the things that are the best that I use. We have a whole seed bank area for your summer garden, your fall garden, non-GMO, heirloom, super high quality. It's fun to have a garden. It's inexpensive. The kids love it. Plus, things are getting serious. It's good to have one of these to plant now and later. We have the widest selection out there from, what is it, 14 different companies and the lowest price from all these people you're going to find. Infowarsstore.com. When it comes to the nutraceuticals, I've got a lot of great nutraceutical sponsors like Longevity, InfoWarsHealth.com, great products. And when you buy at InfoWarsHealth.com, you can get free shipping when you sign up for auto ship or become a distributor for $10, get 30% off your first order, InfoWarsHealth.com. But I launched three years ago InfoWarsLife.com, first with one product. Now we've got like, I don't know, what is it, 16 products. To go out and have game changers at InfoWarsLife.com, some things that are hiding in plain view, some things that are prescription in Europe, all of it really, really, for myself and others, you've heard the rave reviews, works. And with third-party review sites, we have the highest reviews of anyone out there. And even the herbal nuts, the herbal snobs are salivating over these products. That's why so many of them are sold out. We are trying to get a bunch of them in right now. But, and then sourcing it because it's non-GMO, concentrated, high quality, triple tested to not have any toxins or heavy metals or adulterations. It, it, it's really the Rolls Royce or Bentley of products, the Ferrari of products at a Ford F-150 price. And when you purchase at InfoWarsLife.com, it funds our operation. After being sold out for weeks, Ramel Vitality is back in stock at InfoWarsLife.com. We're now taking orders on this uh, emergency shipment we had made as quickly as possible. It's the new and improved, higher concentrated, even stronger formula. Uh, it has hundreds of five-star reviews, is our best-selling formula for a reason, and you can read the reviews, again, right there on the site. Here's one from Climber in Gilbert, Arizona. I'm a cyclist. Supermel Vitality has improved my overall performance and average speed. Here's another one. Um, one Please customer, Redding, California. I was introduced to this product by my son. We own and operate a family-run business that requires a lot of attention, both physically and mentally, that can take quite a toll on a guy. Since we have both been using Supermel Vitality, there is a marked improvement in not only our work and professional day-to-day -day performance, but the after-hours family time is where the big man comes in. That's what are we talking about there. Uh, thank you for the high-quality product. Well, thank you for your support. Plus, even if I was a sociopath, which I'm not, if I sell super high quality stuff, competitively priced, I'm going to become popular in the market and be successful. And it's that idea we've gotten away from. So thank you all for your support. Infowarslife.com or 888 
253-3139. Over 500 products at InfoWarsStore.com. InfoWarsLife.com is just a subsection of that online shopping center. But it's all about free will. We don't take a gun, put it to your head, and take money for banker bailouts. We don't take money and give it to NPR, MSNBC, and stimulus money to give Rachel Maddow you know, a, a raise so she can interview Michael Moore. We're just here saying we got great products. If you believe in what we're doing, buy them. And then we're a platform to have people like Mr. Dent on and others. Now, I'm ranting. I want to go to phone calls. I want to go back to our guest. Harry, you're a gentleman. You don't like to pitch your stuff. But let me tell you, out of all the great guests we have on, and they've got really good track records of being accurate, they say a lot of the same stuff you say, but you say it with research, precision, and frightening accuracy. Put a plug in for your book at harrydent.com, The Demographic Cliff. Yeah, I, I, again, this book came out a few years ago. We're offering it for free. Uh, all you pay is shipping and handling. And this is the real shipping and handling, not on the 1995 commercial where, you know, you pay more than it costs. Just $4.95. Uh, again, if you like what you're hearing here, we have a full analysis of the global economy, of debt around the world, of demographics around the world. And demographics are so important, and economists are so clueless about it. And, and we even show why real estate will never be the same. People just don't get that real estate went up in our lifetime because the first middle class generation came out of World War II and bought homes massively for the first time. Sure, and I hate to interrupt you, but you predicted that would be the final trigger would be a Chinese housing crash. Here it is in the Financial yeah. Times of London two days ago. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, but, but I mean, even when we do see this global crash in real estate, it's not going to come roaring back, maybe in India, but not in the United States or China or many places like it did in the past. So, you know, we help people see what you need to do now to protect your money from a big crash. But where do you invest when we do see this crash? And, and there's a lot of areas, but, but housing is one of them that's not going to be the place uh, to make big gains. And, and surprisingly, gold, after doing so poorly for years, and, and will do much more poorly ahead, gold and commodities could be a great investment. But emerging countries are going to be the future demographically around the world. So, so we give people a whole picture in this book, and, and you can get it for free. Well, people should go get the book. I've read the book uh, a while back, and it's just you can't argue with it. And now we're hitting that wall. Let me ask you this question. And I asked it earlier, but I want to talk about a few minutes to go to some phone calls here, specifically zeroing in on what you think is going to start happening in two weeks and then what some of the other triggers could be and how this could look. Because uh, major university studies estimate 7 million people died during the 10-year Great Depression from association of malnutrition and diseases from the collapse. And we had 90% of people being rural, most of them self-sufficient. And we had 7 million people starve to death or die as complications from malnutrition. Now, if things go belly up, and we got a lot of hardworking Americans, but we got a lot of spoiled brats, too. And this whole entitlement society and Hollywood pushing, you know, gangster culture and all the rest of it. I mean, I look around me and it scares the daylights out of me to think about what a hardcore depression will look like in this country. Yeah, I mean, there's more political polarization than I've ever seen in U.S. history. Uh, there's more extreme inequality than we've seen since uh, the late 1920s. This cannot end well. Um, a lot of people are going to blame each other when this happens, and not, nobody's going to be totally true about that, but they're going to blame each other, and people are not going to be happy. And I tell you, if you think it's going to be bad here, don't even imagine being in China when the biggest urban migration in history falls apart and, and these people can't even go back to their rice paddies because they've been paved over with empty condominiums. It, it just, so I, I think people like really need to hunker down and say, look, I mean, and I don't even know how bad this can get on the civil level. I just see that it's not just gonna be a financial collapse. There are going to be civil problems and you need to live in a safe place you need to protect yourself in just very basic ways, not just your investments, um, and, and just say, how can I be as safe as possible if the world kind of melts down? And it doesn't melt down forever. I'm not a doom and gloomer. I've been bullish most of my life, but I am a doom and gloomer now, 
because all the fundamental trends point down. And it, and it worries me the most, Alex, that governments have fought this so hard. Governments have never fought a downturn and, and a reset in financial assets and debt so hard. You have to let a lot of this debt go. It's like a, a financial detox, you know, just like people would do on diet or something if they want to get healthier, if they had cancer or something. We need this, and they just won't let it happen. So when it does happen, it's going to be worse than it would have sure. been. So I say protect yourself and say, where do I live? How liquid are my financial assets? How flexible am I? That's the way to survive this. And then when things fall apart, it's going to be like Joseph Kennedy in the early 30s where you're buying stuff for 10, 20 cents on the dollar. That's right. Uh, boy, I tell you, what are all the pundits and people that sold all these ideas what are they going to do? Just hope the public has the attention span of a goldfish? Well, again, you know, I, I listen to all the great experts and the hedge fund managers, and I hate to say it, Warren Buffett. Nice, decent guy, great investor. He doesn't have a clue of what's going on in the economy. He's been a cheerleader for the government. All these other financial experts and Wall Street, they all want to keep the bubble going because they all benefit. When this thing bursts, they're going to get hit the worst. The, the most, the richest people in the world are going to hit the, get hit the worst, except for the smartest ones to get out of the way, because they own the most financial assets. This, these financial institutions who are levered up unbelievably and now are speculators instead of lenders or investment bankers, which, which is even worse, they're going to get hit horribly. So again, I, I just tell people, there's nothing you can do about this. There's nothing I can do about this. All we can do is get out of the way. Get Absolutely. And I meant to say earlier, like with the supplements and stuff, our greatest asset is our health and our security and our exactly. safety. And yeah. it just comes down to that, folks. You got to take care of what you can take care of. And the rest is we tried to stop all this. And whether it's this year or whenever, I don't see how long they can hold this off. And the elites, I know, are scurrying to the hills. Uh, I want to go to some phone calls with Mr. Dent here. Again, you're listening to the Alex Jones Show on stations across the country. Please support these local affiliates, folks. Uh, let's go ahead and talk to Austin in Florida. I thought Austin was in Texas, but another okay. lame joke. Uh, Austin, go ahead. Can you guys hear me? Yes, sir. Go ahead. Okay, uh, my question is, when the financial collapse does happen, let's say, and I don't know, this winter, let's just say, how will this affect the U.S. geopolitically? Will this cause a war with Russia or World War III? And, how is, and will American people buy into it as well? Sure, here's a question. What do you expect to do to the dollar? Because uh, if other countries are collapsing worse, would the dollar go up? I mean, I don't think anybody really knows for sure, but what's your gut tell you, Mr. Dent? Well, I know I do know for sure on this one. In the last crisis, when things really went down and Lehman Brothers went down and we had a financial uh, crisis, the U.S. dollar went up 27% in a matter of months. Oil collapsed, gold collapsed, silver went running to mommy, um, real estate went down, stocks around the world went down. The dollar is the safe haven, and not because we're doing the right things, but we're the best house in a bad neighborhood. Europe is stimulating much more than we are now. Japan sure. stimulates three times as much as us. They are in much worse shape when this thing boils down. And when the global economy goes down, a lot of these financial assets are priced in U.S. dollars. And when these U.S. dollars get destroyed, guess what? The U.S. dollar goes up in value because there's fewer of them and it's going to buy more. We have 23 sure. aircraft carriers. The next largest country has one or two. France has the SS Croissant, as you know. I mean, this is, there's nobody else to run to. Except what happens the, to interest rates? Hmm? What do you see interest, interest rates doing in the next six months? Okay. Uh, they may go up um, at first for treasury bonds when people worry about another downturn and, and higher deficits. But ultimately, the treasury bonds will go down even further with deflation and prices. But junk bonds, higher risk bonds, will go up um, astronomically. And, 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 and junk bonds are like stocks. We told people two years ago to sell the junk bond indexes and junk bonds because a higher risk economy will create greater defaults. But for treasury bonds in the strongest countries like Germany or the United States, they will tend to uh, hold their value and increase over time. In the Great Depression, 
the only sector of investments other than cash that, that had higher value were sure. the treasury bonds and the highest quality AAA corporate bonds, stocks. Sure. Well, I think the best thing to do is just be in cash. So when everything bottoms out, like you said, you can do a Joe Kennedy. I, I want to go to calls here, but a lot of them are asking the same thing. Luke and Adam and others want to go to them. Uh, and we'll get your answer, but it's, I mean, here's the headline in the Telegraph. Europe in crisis, everyone from Putin to ordinary savers is stockpiling gold. If commodities are going to go down, we've seen gold go up a little bit the last few days, why would they be stockpiling? I think it's because it is a good emergency backup if governments start confiscating cash, but they could do that to gold too. We'll get Dent's take on that. Luke in Arizona, you're on the air. Go ahead. Hello. Yes, go ahead. Hi. Uh I just, I, I had a statement and then I wanted to ask a question. You bet. Uh, We're not screening your call. You're on air. Go ahead. Thank you. Uh, first, there are right now uh, bullion checking accounts available to Americans. I have one. Uh, I use silver all the time. It, it's a debit card that works on the Visa network. Uh, and especially listening to the, uh, the guest today, I, I'm going to be out of dollars, you know, coming the 25th. Uh, I don't want to be anywhere near the this, this system. Uh, I guess my question for Mr. Dent was, do you think that uh, China's, uh, you know, play, I guess you could say the managed crash of their system, do you think they're doing this basically to cause uh, to cause a ripple so that when everything kind of crashes and falls out and, and everybody has to kind of look at, you know, what hard assets do does their government have, you know, sovereign debt-wise that they can back up with, that their paltry 1,600 uh, ounces of gold is actually going to look pretty good when everybody else is kind of demanding their gold back from depositories, uh, especially from America, and, we, you know, we're not even giving Germany their gold back yet. Okay, look, uh, I hear you. Then, you think gold's going to go up. You're, you're promoting a scarcity of gold, which I've said I think it'll go up as things get worse. Other commodities will go down, just in my gut. We see that happening. Dent disagrees with that, and I'm, and I'm not saying I'm right. Uh, I, I hold some gold just as a total emergency backup as a form of cash. Uh, what do you say to what Luke just said? Thank you, Luke. Well, you know, uh, in the last crisis, gold went up in the first several months. Stocks peaked in October 2007. Gold peaked in, in I think, like uh, June or something, and then went down when the crisis hit. So I think the same thing could happen this time. In the early stages, gold could go up. Gold is way oversold right now. If anything, I mean, I'd rather own gold right now short term than stocks. But I think stocks are about to crash. Gold could go up. But when we see deflation, um, gold is going to go down again like it did last time. So, so I am not a fan of gold longer term. Short term, I am somewhat. You but super long term, you think it's the ultimate winner, right? Oh, well, well, yeah. 2040, I think gold could hit $5,000 an ounce with the next commodity bubble that's going to be driven by the growth of emerging countries. And guess who consumes the most gold in the world as consumers? Indians and Chinese, off the charts. Um, but we're in a commodity downturn, and I was the first to forecast this several years ago. Commodities are gonna be down for years, and gold goes up and down with the commodity index since it stopped becoming a monetary mo uh, metal in the early 70s with Nixon and stuff. So people got to get over this. Gold's the ultimate. Sure, sure. What if, the, what if the globalists out of this world crisis bring in the SDR and try to back it with a currency basket and a commodities basket made up of silver and gold? I mean, you know they're kicking that around. But you, you can't do it. The, the, all of the gold in the world would fit in an Olympic-sized swimming pool. You cannot back today's modern, information-intensive, service economy with gold like you could in the Roman Empire or even the 1800s when we were still mostly farmers. Gold is a standard. It was a good standard. We need a standard. Gold cannot and will not, and I will predict this until I die, sure. will not be the standard. Well, what's the future. standard going to be then? Uh, energy? No, you're going to have to have standards where governments make agreements among each other that you can't push down your currency artificially. So you're talking about go back to a new Bretton Woods. And you cannot let debt grow more than X percent of the economy. It's just a, it's just a simple, it'd be a quantitative standard, but you can't back today's economy with a commodity like gold. So you're talking about a monetary gold. treaty. I mean, why would we want to back it with gold if there was a strike in South Africa and gold would be cut back and the whole world would collapse? It's crazy. No, I, mean, I get what you're saying. I, I'm, I was asking the question. You know it's being bandied about by some of the top policymakers as a new currency, a new bubble. 
Okay, okay. I, ultimately, a, a basket of currencies could be better, but if I'm right, and then what happened in 2008 occurs again, and the U.S. dollar rises and almost every other major currency falls, who's going to want a basket of falling currencies? The U.S. dollar, I think, for the next two to three years is safe as the reserve currency. After that, we do need a better monetary system. And I've told people, when I retire and have a little extra time, I'm going to figure a way to have a better global monetary system. Because even these floating exchange rates, where, where a company in the United States would be competitive one day and then not because the dollar you know, rose in value. That's it's perfect crazy. for speculators. We're building the whole planet for speculators. Dion yeah. in Illinois, you're on the air with Mr. Dan. Yeah, Harry, uh, I don't know which which jobs uh, are going to be wiped out by the collapse and which jobs you think will be on demand and what's going to happen to the people that are out of the labor market. Thank you. You talking about stocks or no? He was I, talking about what jobs are secure and what jobs, jobs aren't. Well, you know, um, the jobs that are going to do the best are the ones that are being demanded by the aging baby boomers. Jobs in healthcare, jobs right. in travel, cruise ships, things like that. Even, even um, eating out is probably peaking now. Auto sales are going to peak this year and, and drop off like housing did many years before. Demographics will tell you what's going to do well. And the economy will hurt almost all industries to some degree. But I tell you, healthcare, uh, things uh, that serve older people, uh, maintenance services for houses. I tell you, in Japan, you know what's doing well? Convenience stores and pharmacies. That's what's That's doing right. the best. Well, you can job. see that. They're building a Walgreens or CVS on every corner. It's going to be robots, servicing robots. Robotics, exactly. How do you replace young people and workers you can't afford when old people need more service? It's just going to be unbelievable. Well, one thing's for sure, it's not going to be boring into the future. Uh, uh -huh. Let's go to Adam. Adam, you're on the air from Ohio. Go ahead. Oh, man, I can't even believe I made it through. <laughs> you're on the air. Welcome. Go uh, ahead. Um, pretty much my answer, or my question was answered uh, just listening to both of you gentlemen talk. Um, and first of all, Alex, I want to appreciate, or I want to say that how much I appreciate um, all that you do, Endgame was a fantastic documentary. Um, Thank you. And I, I do apologize. I am a little nervous right now. <laughs> well, I'm nervous too about um, what's happening, brother. Go ahead. You got a question for Mr. Dent? Um, well, it's more of a comment now. I just want to remind people to get involved in their church, to get involved in their family, and just uh, keep the good fight. You know, I know it's, it looks bad, but it, it can always be better. Well, Adam, God bless you. And I'm really glad Adam raises that because there's financial wealth, but we could recreate it overnight if we have cultural wealth, a free market, liberty, merit-based economies, transparency, and have our health and have our friends and family, that's the real wealth. Uh, having a garden's the real wealth. Uh, having children's the real wealth. And I think we're going to see a major renaissance in people getting back to basics during this global depression. Uh, what do you think, Harry? Do you think that there's going to be some good come out of this? Yeah, I mean, you know, uh, Alex, I study cycles. I, I was a cycle guy way before I was a demographic guy. I just stumbled on demographics as the most important cycle in this new middle class world, increasingly in, in the emerging world. But, but to me, I, I, one of the cycles I look at that is very, very clear, every 250 years, we have a cultural, political, social revolution like democracy in the late 1700s. And it's set to hit in eight years, isn't it? Yeah, and so that's the next decade is going to see a major revolution that is going to be powerful for emerging countries and is going to restructure developed countries around the values we need. So I think that's going to be the most positive thing that comes out of this crisis. People don't get clear, don't make clear decisions, don't go into the burning barn and save the horse and the dog and the kid and the baby until there's a crisis. And when there's a crisis like 9-11, people just get incredibly clear and intelligent. So I think this crisis is going to bring a big revolution. We're, we're, we've been destroying the free market capitalist system that's made us so prosperous, especially over the last three decades. And we're going to learn how to bring it back with greater wisdom. And I think that's going to be the payoff. All right. Well, the book is free. I, I know about shipping. If you pay people to ship it and, and even ship it media mail, I think you're losing money at four ninety five. Well, I am. I'm losing money on the book. 
we're breaking even on the shipping. But again, harrydent.com, this is the time to get a book like this. Yeah, and you've been a many times New York Times bestseller. I guess you just want to get this out to people. Uh, well, look, I, uh, I appreciate you. We look forward to speaking to you again very, very soon. Sorry the other callers, but we're out of time. And again, anytime you've got something breaking and just want to pop in for 10 minutes, uh, you know, don't just wait for us to call. We appreciate you coming on. But we really, as this unfolds, want to have you back a lot more. So thank you for the time, sir. Okay. All right, harrydent.com. Uh, that's it for the transmission. Nightly news tonight, 7 o'clock Central, Prison Point.